Hello, Great Hearts Arlington families. We are so excited today to provide you with a virtual orientation, talking a little bit more about what those first days of school are going to look like. I've got my administration team here to share some information with you. It's gonna be pretty high level. We wanna talk very generally about what the expectations are, what the school day looks like, maybe a little bit of the curriculum we use, what the, the drop-off procedures are, this is not to replace our virtual orientation modules that are already on our website. Those go into much more detail into each of those specifications. And then of course, in our handbook, even more detail that you might want to know. But this provides a good overview of what some questions you might be asking. So we're gonna go through some of those things today. And of course, if you have any questions or thoughts or concerns at all, please feel free to reach out to us. We are on campus every day now and you can call us or you can send us an email or you can stop by and ask your questions. So we're gonna get into a little bit about Great Hearts Arlington. So Great Hearts Arlington is, is a campus created to love on your students. We are a public charter school. There's no tuition requirements. There's uh, no testing involved to get your students into our campus. We are totally free, tuition-free public school environment. And with that being said, we also follow all state guidelines by the TEA. We follow the TEKS, we take the STAR test. We do those things so that we can serve our students. We can serve our communities. That's so important to us to make sure that we have an elevated campus, an elevated school environment uh, to meet the needs of your students, but that it is also free. So as we talk today, you might hear some differences uh, about maybe your local public schools, but that's only an intention to provide a classical education approach. So a classical education is focused on fundamental skills that help our young scholars learn to read and write and think and discuss and be whole human beings. Even youngest students from kindergarten all the way up to this year through seventh grade, we treat our young scholars as whole human beings. Now there are differences about how we interact with them and those fundamental skills that they need, but our classical education approach elevates them in a way that provides them access to great books of the Western tradition and fundamental skills of learning how to be whole human beings. And there, here, here's a little, um, picture here of what those stages look like. And those are some of the things that we assert in those foundational skills and helping them through that. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about the curriculum that we use to do that. But I wanna go um, into some operational things. So we're just gonna talk about our school times. So our school times are from 7.15 to 4 p.m. Now, there's half an hour window in the morning where you can drop your scholars off at school. 7.15 to 7.45, you see that time there. That's when you can drop your students off. At that point, at 7.45, that's when we start our instructional day. That's when our students are in their classrooms, in their seats. They start with the Pledge of Allegiance uh, and we start our wonderful instructional day. Even in sixth and seventh grade, their first period class starts at that time. Now in the afternoon, we have a very similar procedure there's a half an hour window where you can pick up your students. Um, 3.30 to 4 p.m. is our pickup time. And if any scholars are staying after school for clubs, for tutoring, for extracurriculars, uh, for homework club, that's provided at an additional fee in those particular areas, Athenaeum and homework club, um, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. if parents need that. And if you have questions about that, reach out to us about that aftercare enrichment program. Now here I wanna show you a visual of our pickup and drop off procedure. I know it's a lot, but I'm gonna walk through it and I'm also going to attach this visual to our newsletter this week so you can have a little bit more time to look through it. The important thing to note here is that we have a back pickup and drop off line and we have a front pickup and drop off line. Now, the blue arrows in the front, those are for kindergarten, first grade and second grade and if you have those siblings. So if there's a fifth grader who also has a kindergarten sibling, you're gonna use the front. 
you always go down to the lowest age of the, the grade level of the student. If you have a seventh grader and a fifth grader, they would use the back. Only if you have those scholars that are in K through two, as well as other siblings, would you use the front. So what we have here, turning right off Cooper, if I can use my cursor here, turning right off Cooper, right around this detention pond. And at this point, we have a sign here that says form two lines. And during this queuing area, that's where we will have staff members available to let your students out of your car. We encourage all of our families to be, have their students be ready, unbuckled with their backpack, not unloaded yet until a faculty member comes and opens the door for you to be released. Now you will continue down this line and there will be a sign here that says merge ahead because when you take this left turn, you're gonna loop around here and turn right back onto Cooper. So that is for our scholars, kindergarten through second grade. Now, similar process in the afternoon. If you have those scholars or a sibling in that area, you will use that same procedure to come pick up your students. We will provide you with a name placard that has your child's name and section number so that when you go through this queue, we have a system in place that we can get your students from their classroom to your car as safely, as quickly, and as efficiently as possible. So we will provide that information and those placards on either kindergarten orientation or on Meet the Teacher Night. Now for those older scholars, they will come here off of Eden. There is a stoplight here, so we can turn left or you can turn right off of Eden to come into the back of campus here. And if you follow the arrows around here, you will form two lines by this point all the way around this parking lot. And we will have the same procedure in the back of the building. So in this queuing area, those scholars will be released from their cars to enter the back of the building at this point. And we will have safety monitors and faculty members um, able to bring them in safely and efficiently. Exactly the same in the afternoon as the process in the front, you will have a, a, a card to put in your visor that has your student section and name so that we can get them from inside the building to you in that. And you will continue here. You'll merge at about this point here and go back onto Eden from there. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. The additional thing here is we have the opportunity if parents want to walk their scholar to school or if they want to come in this lane and park in these spots, you may do so. The important thing to know is you have to physically walk your child to this crosswalk along the sidewalk and in the back of the building. We will not be able to release students from a parked spot and let them walk across this traffic lane into the building. If you choose to park and walk your child to the back door, that's great, but you need to walk them across this crosswalk along the, uh, along the line here and in through the back door. So I know that was a lot of information, but I will attach that into the newsletter so that you can look at it a little bit and come back with your particular questions. A couple more operations thing. Attendance is very, very important at a public school. We want our scholars to be in their seats at 745. We don't want them to miss any instructional time. So that attendance piece is very, very important to us. There will be a little bit of a grace period at the beginning of the year as we are going through our operational systems as it might take a little bit longer to get all of our scholars into their classrooms. But we want to as quickly as possible get to at 745, our students are in their classroom and at that time they would be tardy if they're arriving after that time. Also, all scholars may bring a snack to school. We wanna be able to provide them a health and healthy and convenient options that is provided by the parents. Every class period, every grade level has a little bit of time set aside about five to 10 minutes in each of their classes um, in the morning before lunchtime to enjoy a snack. That is provided by the parents and we want you to be able to send healthy and convenient options. Um, messy things are, are difficult to deal with. Uh, we only have water on campus. We don't send Gatorade or pop or soda. Um, so healthy and convenient options. So think about that as you are talking with your children about um, providing that if that is something that you want to do. Now lunch is either sent home or, or sent from home to school or you can get school lunch through our preferred meals program. There's more information to come about setting up student IDs and putting in 
um, monies for either breakfast or lunch for your scholars. Um, but you can either do that or you can send a lunch from home. It's important to note that we don't have refrigeration and we don't have uh, the ability to microwave for our, for our students. So it needs to be a prepackaged meal in their lunch box um, that is easily accessible to them and easy to eat at lunchtime. Recess, all of our K-5 students will have two 20 minute recesses scheduled throughout the day. Um, they'll also have their specials classes and their, their lunch time and their instructional minutes scheduled. But during those two sessions for K through five, they will be able to go outside or use the auditorium for recess time. So sixth and seventh graders, they have one recess um, right back to back with their lunch time, but they get to have some outdoor time and some uh, conversation time with their grade level peers. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to our wonderful Dean of Lower School, um, Mrs. Turner, to talk about dress code. Hello, my name is Mrs. Turner and I am the Dean of the Lower School and I'm going to share with you about our dress code. At Great Hearts Schools, uh, the student uniform is an essential part of who we are and what we do. The uniform serves to unify, unify our scholars as one community of learners, uh, regardless of their diverse backgrounds. The, uni the uniform also signifies to the larger community our common purpose and identity as schools in pursuit of the true, the good, and the beautiful. Finally, the uniform frees our scholars to pursue their intellectual and moral development as individuals without distractions of fad or fashion. On our next slide, you can see some examples here of our school uniform. You can also go on our website for more information and a list of vendors. If you have any questions about school uniforms, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by phone or email. Next, I would like to share with you uh, the pop culture um, at our school. Great Hearts is very intentional about creating a common and civil community amongst our scholars and in preserving an educational environment free from distractions. At school, we do not discuss pop culture personalities, music, movies, politics, and current events. To further this educational environment, Great Hearts also requires scholars to use backpacks, lunch boxes, and other accessories that are free from such images or references. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by phone or email. Hi, my name is Justin McGee. I'm the Dean of the Middle School here at Great Hearts Arlington. I wanna share with you just a little bit about the curriculum here at Great Hearts and why um, we do what we do. The goal of the curriculum at Great Hearts is to create lifelong learners to the pursuit of the good, the true, and the beautiful. Being a classical school, we believe that the Western tradition lays a foundation for this to occur for our scholars. While we explore cultures and civilizations from around the world, our emphasis is on the tradition that uniquely developed our heritage here in the United States, the Western tradition. So what do your scholars study then throughout their time here at Great Hearts? Well, they study literature, philosophy, history, math, science, the languages, and the fine arts. We believe that all of these disciplines are for all of our scholars because these Specific disciplines are the things that form the human person holistically, form their hearts, their minds, and their souls. So your scholars throughout their time here at Great Hearts will be in, immersed in all of these uh, disciplines. And so then what does this look like practically? In the lower school, in regards to the particulars of their curriculum, they focus on two things, Spalding and Singapore. Spalding develops the reading, writing, and spelling skills of our scholars. And then Singapore, math develops their math skills. These pillars of our lower school education are not done in isolation from our desire to form the moral and intellectual virtues of our scholars. 
they are done in conjunction with them. When particulars are fused with the philosophical, the imagination of our scholars is sparked, and they begin to see, experience, and know at a level that not only prepares them for a vocational life, but also transforms their hearts, their minds, and their souls. As our scholars move into the middle school, we begin to incorporate what we call the classics to keep, novels and stories that transcend time and uncover our shared human experience. We wrestle with these texts through generous conversation and through writing to push each other to grow as learners and as human beings. In math for our scholars, they experience the rigor of the Carnegie math program, which challenges the students in the concepts of algebra. And they do this in a very systematic way infusing a sense of order in a world that is oftentimes seems disorderly. In science, we learn and categorize the natural and physical world, not for its own sake, but be to be attuned to the beauty of flame in the world. In Latin, we immerse ourselves creatively in the life and the people of Rome in order to provide rich context to the language that undergirds many languages in the West. And then lastly, our lower school and middle school scholars get ample opportunities to learn how to use their bodies well and as they were intended in our physical education class. Our scholars will also be immersed in the, into the canon of the Western musical tradition and the theory that shapes it. And they'll also be able to learn how to create their own works of art using the traditional shapes and forms of depiction. In the end, your scholars will encounter the true, the good, and the beautiful in our school and classrooms. And here's the really cool thing. Because of that, they're going to be different and they're going to be changed forever. If you're looking for more information on the Great Hearts curriculum, just want to encourage you, we have virtual modules that we've sent through our newsletter that are also online. And then there are uh, links to Zooms that uh, Mr. Dunnick, our headmaster, did earlier this year. Um, and they're called Coffee with the Headmaster, where he walks through some of these different curricular elements of Great Hearts. Next, I want to pass it to Ms. Franco, and she's going to continue on with our presentation. Hello, my name is Dina Franco. I'll be the assistant headmaster here at Great Hearts Arlington. I'm going to talk a little bit about assessments and homework for your scholar. As a key philosophical assumption, the academy holds that every student can learn. Our curriculum is rigorous and expectations of students are high. However, we are not only an exclusive school for the best and brightest. Our goal is to provide an environment that allows every student who wants to learn the opportunity to achieve academically. As human beings, we are equal in that we all have the capacity to learn and grow, but this equality and capacity cannot be confused with equality of academic results. Just as individuals differ in their physical gifts and characteristics, we all have different gifts and challenges in the subjects of learning. A student's desire to learn is the key to success and fulfillment at the academy. Every student who has passed the appropriate prerequisites is genuinely curious and applies him or herself diligently on a daily basis will succeed. As a classical liberal arts school, our desire is to foster joy and the love of learning. We are also committed to evaluating and providing feedback to our scholars for the purpose of their intellectual and academic growth. Our kindergartners and our first graders will receive one of the following in all of their classes, an E for excellence, an S for satisfactory, an N for needs improvement, or a U for unsatisfactory. Our second through fifth grade scholars will receive an E, S, N, or U for their PE, music, art, and Spanish classes. For their core content classes, second through fifth graders, will receive a letter grade of A, B, C, D, or F. Sixth and seventh grade scholars will receive a letter grade for every class, including PE, art, music, and Latin. All scholars earn grades in three different categories, tests and quizzes, homework and classwork, and participation. You will receive evaluations and support throughout the year about your scholars' progress, including deficiency reports, report cards, parent-teacher conferences, narrative evaluations, and tutoring and interventions that are appropriate for your child. You will receive communication about your scholar's academic work and behavior through their daily planner, homework folders, and phone calls and emails from your student's teacher.
We believe that the majority of class time should be spent in the collective pursuit of what is true, good, and beautiful about a specific subject. Homework time then is reserved primarily for reading and for meaningful independent activities that support the curricular objectives of a given course. Students should expect to do meaningful homework each night. The purpose of homework is to provide additional practice, build strong study habits, and to develop student responsibility. You will find information about your scholar's homework in their homework folder and their planner. If you ever have any questions about their homework or how they're doing in class, please feel free to reach out to your student's teacher. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about student culture, what to expect inside the classroom with respect to behavior uh, and those things that we want to cultivate in our students, their moral formation and acquisition of virtue and virtuous habits. So habits of behavior play a significant part in forming habits of the mind. Our approach to moral formation is grounded in the wisdom of the ancients, both Plato and Aristotle. They believed that our happiness depends largely on our capacity for forming meaningful human partnerships, collaboration, conversation, relationships. The school and classroom are important opportunities to grow as friends and citizens. Virtue is cultivated through habituation. We become just by doing things that are just temperate, by doing those things that are temperate and courageous. The school structures and procedures properly create a joyful, ordered, and safe environment in which students may encounter daily examples of virtue and become habituated to its exercise. We want our students to practice those things that are good and noble so that those become intrinsically motivated in them wanting to do those in a community and for themselves. So within those conversations, we wanna make sure that we have systems set up in place that we can motivate them and we can communicate that with our families, kind of that habituation process, those expectations, those rules, the consistent behaviors that we wanna make sure that our students are practicing and coming to an understanding of the fruit that allows them. So kindergarten through fourth grade, in all of their classes, they have a clip chart. Now it is not the focal point, the point in the classroom. It's usually on the side or in the back, um, and each student has a clip that they could move up or down on the clip chart. Now it starts in the middle every day, I'm ready to learn. And it could go up to good and great and excellent. Now, with that being said, we want to develop in our students an, an, extrin an intrinsic motivation for wanting to do what is right beyond what their expectations are. So we don't often clip our students up for just doing the things that we've asked them to do. They should do it because they trust us and they believe in us and they are encouraged to do that because that's what the expectation is. But oftentimes they'll move up for exhibiting virtues and being a role model student going above and beyond what the expectations are to help out a friend or to help out in the learning environment. So we are coaching our students and saying that these things are the right things to do and you can develop in that. Now, at the same time, we want to encourage our students uh, against negative behaviors. So our approach to that is having conversations, targeted conversations around corrective actions. So validating our students' emotions and motivations, but giving them an opportunity to see more clearly the things that they weren't able to see and to allow them to be better from those opportunities. So they could move down. Um, they could clip down to time to reflect, which is just an opportunity inside the classroom to set aside and think about how could I have made a better choice? From there, they could go down to loss of privilege. They might lose one or two minutes of recess, or they might lose out on an opportunity um, that would be a privilege to them. We don't wanna take away whole recesses. We don't wanna take away from the, the instructional environment, but we want to help students be motivated to do right actions. And from there, it might be an office referral where we would talk to the student in a very targeted conversation about correcting that behavior. And of course, engaging you in that conversation as, as well. Sending notes home, sending emails, more often than not phone calls about, you know what, we, we have an opportunity here to correct that behavior. So that's part of our administrative team for those students who 
might need a little bit of extra support learning how they fit into making better decisions for themselves. And it's all done through love, love and logic, helping them to come to that understanding that we love them and we want them here and there are particularities that help them be more than what they currently are. Now in fifth, sixth and seventh grade, because of two reasons, one, it's more developmentally appropriate to not have that uh, particular process, but also because they're starting to rotate within their classrooms. Fifth grade has a block schedule. And then of course, sixth and seventh grade is fully middle school. We have a different system of infractions and commendations. So students could receive an infraction for uh, negative behavior, or they could receive a commendation, something that is attached to a virtue that said, we noticed you doing this thing particularly well. Now we use an online system called Hero to track those things as they are rotating between classrooms um, and uh, to communicate to you as well. So we can run reports and send reports to you on how they're doing positively or corrective action of those infractions. Now I did forget to mention for the K through four students inside their homework folder, they will have a behavior chart that shows where their clip was at the end of the day. Now throughout the day, they do have opportunities to move up and down because we want to give them opportunities to make wise choices and say that we, that this culture of error that we're creating to say we're not perfect and we can only uh, move, get better by those choices that we respond to. But that communication piece to you all, to the parents inside their homework folder, they'll have a behavior calendar with those little clip designations where a teacher might circle or they might highlight where their clip was uh, and then we'd ask for you to sign it if there's any notes as well. And so for those, those older students, um, the opportunity to have targeted, targeted conversations around correcting their behavior, and if necessary, um, bringing you in to, to be a part of that conversation as well, to make sure that as a community, we are building that conversation in community about not only academically, but also their moral formation as well. So if you have particulars on those questions um, that might come up, please don't hesitate to reach out to us to, to receive more information. From there, I just wanna talk about some upcoming events. So we do have our kindergarten orientation on August 5th, and that is from 6 to 7.30 p.m. We'll have an opportunity for our administration to talk to the parents and students in the auditorium about what to expect as a kindergartner. It will be a lot of this, but I know there's particular considerations for our youngest of scholars transitioning into a full day of schooling. Uh, and then you'll get the opportunity to meet with your teachers, to drop off your school supplies, to see your classrooms. Um, if you're not able to make that event, because I know this was a new added event and many of you um, wanted, it was just the meet the teacher night, we will provide another touch point opportunity for our kindergarten teachers to call those parents who weren't able to make it on kindergarten orientation, maybe set up a specific meeting for them. And of course, you are welcome to come to meet the teacher night on August 9th. You can come, you can see the classrooms, you can drop off your supplies. From teachers will not be there for that event. I've asked them to particularly be designated on August 5th, but give them the day to prepare on August 9th. So if there's a touch point that we can have over the next couple of weeks, if you're not available on August 5th, um, we, we can schedule that with you and we can reach out specifically to your kindergarten teacher. But from there on, on August 9th for Meet the Teacher from five to six, we'll have last names A through M. And this is really just a logistics opportunity because we have you know, 700 families on campus. And this will allow us time to cycle parents through to meet the teacher, to drop off their school supplies. This is not an orientation event like the kindergarten event. This is just a meet the teacher, meet my friends, drop off my stuff. We will have this event, this virtual orientation, and then coming up um, following school starting a curriculum night where we'll talk to you much, much more about what's going on in the school. And that will be a presentation from both the administration and from your individual teachers. So that will be an upcoming event for curriculum night. But meet the teacher night is just a, a great hangout and meet the teachers and drop off your school supplies. So amazing families, thank you so much for, for partnering with us. We're so excited. Um, we're at school right now every day prepping things. Some of you have come in for tours. They're painting, getting everything ready. The teachers are here every day diligently on working through their curriculum and lesson planning and setting up their classrooms. And we're so excited to meet with you. 
So if there's any opportunity for you, for you all to, to make a touch point, to call us or to send us uh, an email, if you have any questions or thoughts or concerns in the meantime, please reach out to us and we are so excited. So thank you all. And we will be posting this in the newsletter and on our website and let us know, let us know how we can partner with you. And we're so excited for this adventure that is coming. Thank you all.